everybody. Hi, Sydney. Hi, Hello. Levi. Hello. Boy, we've got one heck of a show today, don't we? We wow. sure do. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, well, I'm looking at two amazing dogs backstage back there, and, and they're just amazing. So, wow. Before we get started, we uh, actually, I saw a couple, I saw a question come in. And, um, and Patty asked if uh, there was transportation to the to the, to New York and um, at least I'm trying to bring it up here. There it is. <laughs> and um, the answer to that, I, is, I believe so. Yes. Um, the answer is yes, absolutely. That's what I thought. Um, so please do apply on our website. Yep. You go to um, great Pyrenees rescue society.org. Trust me, you'll see that address in his show quite a bit. Yeah. Today. So <laughs> but we do have yeah. a transport that goes to the East coast now. Okay. All right. So um, uh, I don't have to bring your last one up. We just answered it. Plus, Rena's down there answering it. Hi, hi, Rena. So, uh, boy, have we got a good one coming up today. So, but first of all, we got a um, uh, a special one. I'm gonna. We got to talk about. Uh, we have um, uh, a dog back in 2017 that was adopted. Uh, she was known as uh, Ruby back then, and uh, she got adopted. Um, and they've been calling her Rosie ever since then. So that's, I'm sure that's what she answers to. Well, um, they turned into a bonded pair. And um, the husband and the, the wife is battling cancer that uh, I'm not sure looks good or not. But any cancer, no, there's no such thing as good cancer. So um, and then the husband suddenly died. And now she she has to return and you know surrender the dogs back to the rescue both of them all right so there's a black lab and a great pyrenees named rosie coming all right or ruby however i don't know what uh the database is going to say but um let me get her their pictures up here i can do that at least they're way down here there's about 100 pictures up here so <laughs> bear with me <laughs> all right uh, and that's one of the things I think while you're doing that, Steve, is um, I can talk about um, is now that these two lovely dogs who are, are well loved um, have become a bonded pair. We never separate a bonded pair. So we've taken them both in because they are each other's best friend. Um, and we would never want to, to break that up. It's really important to both of their health and happiness to stay together. So that's, that's really important to us as a rescue. Uh, and it says that, uh, that they're both good with kids, cats, good on a leash. Wow. Maybe I want them. <laughs> I um, know. They're <laughs> lovely. Yeah. They're lovely dogs. Now they do get a little excited when they see other dogs or maybe they get goofy looking. I don't know here. Um, but uh boy she's good looking lab isn't she, isn't she? Um, yeah i love this picture that's a power <laughs> they just like don't the look very amused that's all <laughs> um but they're good dogs and they're in a rough situation right now and kind of urgent because you don't know where cancer goes from here okay you just never do so um but and also boy i'll tell you that ruby rosie um boy that's a good looking girl too yeah but sydney's absolutely right uh what i've noticed about the rescues um is if there's an indicator that they're a bonded pair they won't separate them just in case all right do you know about um, how big they are steve just curious i'm sorry do you know how about that's how big they are um that's what i'm looking for and i um not sure rena is watching the show she'll go put that in the comments um um, but, um, I don't have handy. I, can, I don't think I have their age either. I can look it up really quick. Yep. Okay. Sydney they also are it. used to going to the store with their person and they're good. <laughs> they are good citizens in the store. Uh, I heard rumors that one day they went to the store without them. They made them go back and get them. <laughs> so now, um, it says Daisy is exuberant, typical lab, affectionate, loves to play, eat, and loves to be close to her human. Yeah. Now it says, wow. unlike Daisy, Rosie isn't very interested in playing with toys. Daisy loves to play, especially fetch. So there you go. And, so uh, um, 
Yep. <laughs> so yep. Daisy is about 85 pounds and she is about seven years old. Okay. And okay. then um, Ruby, AKA Rosie um, is about 90 pounds. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Right now she's a little bit slim. She's about 77 pounds um, and she could stand to be about 90. And she's the, she's about this um, about six years old. Wow, they're 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 getting to they're the perfect age. Yeah. Wow. That's, that's a good age. That is a very good age. So Great Pyrenees Rescue Society.org. Um they're they're listed. And uh, they they need uh, they they need a new home. And uh, yeah. now the, we, uh, right now they're still with the prior owner in the Pacific Northwest. Okay. Yeah. All right. So anything to add, uh Sydney? We so uh um gosh within the last year or two we had a uh, a previous pair of um two girls who a female peer and a lab who were bonded um and Rena actually helped those two that bonded pair find a home um to a really lovely adopter so um it's it's kind of cute that we have that opportunity again to help um right. a peer and a lab bonded pair again. And if you can't take them, spread the word. That's all you got to do. Share the show. All right. Um, that's a good way to do it. So um, anyway, wow. Well, let's move on. What else do we have? We answered the question. We covered Rosie and Daisy. Oh, we got a show to do. Do you have anything before we move up here to our first guest? Okay. So well, we're doing something here. We're trying something out. We ain't going to be trying something out. Um, um, but there are there are, there are fosters and there's people in this country that just don't have the technology uh, to come on to a show like this live. So does that mean we don't get to show the dogs? Nope, not anymore. We're going to show them anyway. Okay, it's the next best thing to them being here live. Okay, but first we got a live one. Well, actually, no, she's not. <laughs> she, I think she might be asleep. Um, <laughs> We, we, we've got us one here. Her name is Sadie. And um, she came um, out of a hoarding case in Texas. Is that right, Sydney? Yes. Um, and I think there it was 120 was, dogs. There was uh, somewhere, I think I uh, read over 120 dogs yeah. at one point I Wild. read. Yeah, a lot of dogs. And there was only two peers in there. And, um, and GPRS took them both. And Sadie is one of them. And Sadie made us a little video that we're going to play and we're going to bring her up.
that's the first time in a long time I was saying, hurry up, video, get over. I'm going to see her. <laughs> wow, what a what a girl. I like the part where you have to text your neighbors so they can come out of the house so she will come back up the driveway after they pet her. <laughs> Isn't that great? Once she knows where um, um, you know the neighbors live, then um, they're a regular stop. We make a wow. couple of regular stops when we go out for walks. Wow. So pretty soon they'll just be waiting on her if you do structured walks, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly the case. And she'll she'll like she'll walk up to the house and then peek her head around the backyard. Maybe they're on the side, and then she'll sit in the driveway. Okay, you have to do the thing. You have to text them. Can you call them? Make them come out, please. I will tell you what, that is one transformation. Uh, just an uh, amazing transformation that she has made from that hoarding situation to what we see now. And how long has that been? Uh, seven weeks now. Seven, seven weeks. weeks. Isn't that yeah. something, Levi? Seven yeah, weeks. Yeah, that's a pretty good one. And, Those are some um, good pictures, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, he did some uh, good ones. Um, but the transformation is... That is, is obviously she didn't want to be in a hoarding situation. She prefers it in a home, doesn't she? Yes, yes. She Good. prefers quiet and calm and um, the ability to sleep a lot. <laughs> Belly rub. <laughs> Belly rub. Excuse me. <laughs> there you have it, everybody. Uh, <laughs> there you go. <laughs> she that's my no kind rub. of dog. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. I have one at home now that will turn. If I don't, if she'll lay next to me, and if I don't rub her belly, she'll turn a little further upside down. <laughs> then, then pretty soon you, she'll start doing barrel rolls. Dad, where, where's my belly rub? Now, um, apparently she's good on the leash. She gets along well with people. I mean, um, is there anything that she gets in trouble for? How dare you? There we go. You're still <laughs> on a roll, Sydney GPRS. <laughs> Man, we've been all year with perfect peers. <laughs> no, really, she's um, just um, a delight. I mean, she's she's kind of a sloppy drinker. Well, so I keep the bowl outside <laughs> on the porch, but other than that, she's just a peach. If you would give her a sippy cup, she wouldn't have to go through that. Yeah, you, you raise a good point. <laughs> I know a lot of humans um, that are sloppy drinkers, and we keep them around. Yeah, I am one true. of them. So, uh, <laughs> now, what about cats? Has she been around cats? No, uh, we haven't been, um, we've been around small dogs and she's, um, you know, interested. Um, um, she, um, is, um, interested in squirrels, but she wouldn't like, you know, eat one. So, um, the there's... only, the other was, um, if a dog is exuberant, um, she'll either just stop or, um, if the dog continues, then she'll give them uh, you know, a uh, uh, well, what for? You need to calm down. She's a mentor dog. Yes. Oh, more than you know. That is so true. Yeah. Uh, I can imagine what her role was in that hoarding situation. It does. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now, do you see, as long as the cat gives their belly rubs, I think the cat would be fine. <laughs> so, um, um, I mean, she's raised that ball up a few times now because you slowed down. <laughs> sure. I think, yeah, I think she would be fine. She's not, she's pretty docile as far as, you know, other creatures go. And then the sunset. Isn't that something? She loves watching the sunset in the easement. Yeah. When, when she, um, when she first arrived, she didn't, she wanted to walk a very small loop. And um, she figured out in the easement that we could hang out at the top of the easement and watch the sunset. And that was her favorite thing. Okay. I had thought maybe it was a coincidence uh, the first couple times, but um, um, then that was just like her, her, that became her thing. And uh, so that was like, that was a fun experience. Yeah. Now, how much does she weigh? She's around a hundred pounds, isn't she? I think so. Yeah. Okay. Um, is she overweight? Is she had a good weight in your opinion? Um so I think she's at a good weight. Um, my neighbors all say they think they think she's at a good weight as well. So, well, that's perfect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. consensus is a poll was taken. So there you go. <laughs> and the majority. Uh, do you have any questions, Sydney? Um, 
I, I do. So have you taken her on any car rides or anything yet? I have not. I have okay. not. Um, so both between um, getting her um, kind of um, rehabilitated um, on in the house and in the walks, you know, like when we go for walks, we go in increasingly larger paths. Yeah. And um, in the house, we go, you know, increasingly in different rooms and things like that. And um, she's okay in the garage, but she's still reluctant to get in the car. Okay. I would love to take her for a car ride. I tell her all the time, the world would like to meet you. Um, but I think she's been through enough that, um, you know, I'm not going to, if she doesn't want to do something, I'm not going to force her to do it. We got a tip of the day, Bill. Where, where do you keep your car? In the garage? Yes. Okay. Open your back door, the door you want her to go in, just open it. And just, that's that. And um, let her sniff it out herself. Put a couple treats in there, maybe. Uh, doesn't matter if she's treat motivated or not. Something that she can relate to and let her figure it out. Oh, that's brilliant. No, it's not. I like either. that. That's no, a brilliant I'm, idea. No, I wouldn't you bring that. from me. <laughs> <laughs> I copied that from Levi, all right? Uh, <laughs> but, yeah, try that and see how that works out because the garage door shut and everything. Is, I mean, can't hurt anything. Sure, that sure. That way she sure. can do it on her own terms. Yeah, that and I think that's – Yeah, I think that's a good point, too, is that when you have a dog that um, they've had so much of – they came from a really yucky situation. You do have to, you can't do everything at once with them. Um, and that's the important thing that you're doing with her is you do kind of layers of things for her to get comfortable. Um, and, and it's the same with the, the foster puppy I have now. Um, I, you just can't do everything at once or you will overwhelm them so much that they'll that's shut right. down again. Yeah. That's why I was amazed at the progress in a short seven weeks. That's a short amount of time sure. considering what she's, where she came from. <clears throat> um, so <clears throat> and there is no timer. There's no timer on any of this. Right. He's petting the timer <laughs> right? and the dictionary. Right. So, because they're the ones right. that define everything, what everything happens. goes at the dog's pace. Not that's ours. right. Yep. That's correct. Um, so, um, now, oh, this George, it's a foster. It's the man that actually found out about her. Um, hi, George. I ought to just call you and put you up to the speaker and let you, uh, I would put you up to the microphone and let you say it. Um, she rode in the car with him. <laughs> That's true. He didn't walk her. I to think <laughs> George might be more charming. Uh, good, good timing, isn't he? Um, we'll talk about him later. His dog's going to be on. Right? Awesome. He, but he's not. George is awesome. George, let's. George is awesome. Right. And um, but yeah, George is re kind of responsible for her coming into rescue. So, um, so thank you, George. But um, seven weeks is a short amount of time for as far as she's come. She loves the sunset. Uh, now, um, so she's still learning to walk because she walks great backwards, doesn't she? Ha, ah, she does. That's how, that's how she summons me. She'll, she'll, I work, I work from home and, uh, the office is adjacent to the bedroom. And so she'll stick her head in the office and then walk backwards, stick her head in the office, walk backwards. Excuse me. I'd like to spend some time with you if you don't mind. <laughs> so she's a people dog then uh, obviously oh my gosh yeah now on that walk uh, in the video it, it um it, sh it showed a um fenced in area isn't that where her fan club is ah that's true yes i live next to a park and um so um we we go for a, a quick walk um, at one, and then we go for a proper walk at six thirty. And the one o'clock walk, we walk down to the park, and that's where her fan club is. And if she looks around, and if she sees anybody, it's I've tried I tried to video that in the um, and it's in the video. You can see she's looking around. She sees people. They're um they're at a play the play set, and she says you can see she's saying, I think they would like to meet me. 
And I so she that. makes a beeline to, to say hi to them. And, and of course, the, they adore them. The they video editing them. software, I actually have a version of that where I did zoom in on it. Uh huh. It just didn't fit. Ah. There's only so much tune to a video, okay? So sure. much song. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, sure. And I felt the other ones were were equally important to, yes. to play. But, but Ben, I'll tell you what, you've done good work here, and uh, thank you for fostering her. And I bet you every day she thanks you. Oh, it's just been awesome. It has just been so makes great. Hands from you, one of the two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Look yeah. at her; she moved. Yay! Yeah, yeah, somebody? Is. So that means somebody that's um, very active and hikes all the time. Uh, that probably she's not quite ready for that yet. But you think she would enjoy that as time goes on? She's three, oh, right? Around around she's, three somewhere. She's three. She's three. Um, you know, so. Uh, when she first at one point we were walking three miles a day um and just because um i'm sort of uh, i do jujitsu and i've damaged i've hurt my knee um we've cut it back to two but if she had her druthers we would be walking three miles a day wait a minute you hurt your knee and you're still walking two yeah 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 i hurt my knee and i whine all the way to the bathroom oh. <laughs> right, so Anyway, wow. Um, Great Pyrenees Rescue Society.org. That's where Sadie's at. She's kind of a celebrity amongst the rescue. Um, I had somebody ask me one time, uh, uh, do you guys save the best for last? And didn't know how to respond to that. Because oh, okay. they're all the best. That's true. Does that make them all last? They're all good. Yeah. <laughs> they're great. That's uh, well, she's good looking girl. She's gorgeous. Oh, and she's. I'm perfect peer again everybody there it is don't 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 dally on her they're going to snatch that. her right out from under you if you don't apply you got to apply that plush coat oh it's oh, so boy. good how does she do with brushing have you brushed her well, oh my gosh she, she loves that. brushing wow wow mine will one of mine uh, will throw you around like a rag doll oh. if, you, if you even show him the brush Oh, no, 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 no. She loves to get brushed. Oh, she's beautiful. Um, and and the key to this, too, also, as I said something that Bill supported, she'd make a good mentor, okay? So um, if you, uh, you know, it's always good in most, in a lot of cases, depending on the dog, to have a friend for them at your home. And a lot of times that's why people adopt is get a companion for their dog. And she would make a great mentor for a puppy, wouldn't she? Oh, absolutely. Uh, Nancy wants to know if she's been around kids. She loves kids. She yeah. loves kids. When we go to the park, very frequently there'll be, um, you know, little kids there, little children. And um, um, she just loves, she'll seek them out and they, you know, will pet her. And they'll, she likes, you know, she likes bum scratches and they'll, so they'll scratch a bum. <laughs> and she just thinks it's awesome, and it's just mutual admiration society. Now, Serena says hi, Bill. Hi, Sadie. Hey. Yeah, Serena's watching. Hey, where, hey, she left. She actually moved, and I missed it. Oh, oh well, she's I'll out. Watch the rerun. Doing her sloppy drinking outside. <laughs> okay. um, how about a, is she a big barker? No, she's okay. So here's what happened when she first arrived. She would wake me up in the middle of the night. I have a humongous dog door. She would wake me up in the middle of the night. I need to go outside, but I don't want to go by myself. And um, so, um, so I'd go out with her. And then um, she eventually, like, you know, after a couple of weeks, she started using the dog door. She didn't need accompaniment. And then two weeks ago in the middle of the night, I heard bork, bork, bork. And I was like, is there another dog outside the fence? <laughs> and she started patrolling. She started going out at night and walking the fence line. Wow. She, she yeah. didn't have a job at the other place. Ain't yeah. Strange? But also, um, um, like, I think that's a testament to her um, developed confidence. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. And she, she's a different dog from the early part of the video to a little bit late. That's a different dog we was looking at. 
Sure. And, uh, even though I knew that it was her pictures, it was like, man, how are, are people going to believe this is the same dog? So I we eased into it. Um, now, uh, Sharon wants to know, um, she says, Sadie seems quite social. Is, is that un, a little unusual for peers? Well, yes and no. Depends on right. the dog. Right. And Sadie's one of those that is uh, a people magnet. Yeah, no kidding, because she's just gorgeous. Yeah. So this is... When she first got here, I got her this plush bed, and she didn't want to use it. And that's just another thing. Is about maybe a month ago, she began. She declared, "This is my bed." <laughs> uh, Lori says that she is gorgeous. It sounds like her, Mister Tibbs, patrolling the fence line. Lori's uh, up in New York, up in up in the Finger, Lake, the Finger Lakes region, and um, she uh, has a special Akbosh boy, Akbosh Pyramix that. Uh, nice. Uh, patrols the fence line too and um and that that boy he's he's um kind of the the leader there you know everybody kind of follows him a little bit when they want to pacify him but he got put in his place by a little kuvaz one night that alive on the show that he back he walked backwards just like sadie did only his was a little hurried <laughs> he didn't want a little girl eating him so but Mr. Um, Tim is an amazing boy. Yeah, and I think I think just going back a little bit to um, whether peers are social or not, um, to not assume that because they look like a really inviting polar bear, to go up to them immediately and just dig your fingers in their fur, um, because they some of them are you have to earn it. Right, um, livestock guardian breed. Yeah, and the so, best in the I mean, world. My Pyrenees that I adopted from GPRS is very much like Sadie. I will take him to Saturday Market to meet new friends because he loves that. That just is his happy place. Um, but other peers, um, they they take time to to warm up, and you need to earn the right to kind of shower them with affection. And so that's important to not make assumptions either way um, right. and to give them some time. Right. One last yeah. question and we got to move on to Ying because um, we don't want, uh, we don't want Ying to get mad at us because he might, she might turn unsocial <laughs> over it. All right. Can you trim her nails? Have you tried? I've never tried. Um, we walk so much. It's not really a problem. They just kind of, self-trimming except the yeah. double dues they don't self-trim right i just keep an eye on that yeah right. but you but you haven't had the need to try yet let us know Correct. keep us up to date on that one if you would sure 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 because we're curious about that all right great pyrenees rescue society.org bill thank you for coming up here and showing her to us it's boy i'll tell you no regrets here i'm glad you did um, <laughs> oh wow. i love that slow lean that's oh, my favorite yeah. <laughs> Wow. I wish mine did that. <laughs> oh. Well, if you quit beating on them, Levi, they might. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you're right. I just have to stop yeah. screaming and beating them. last thing Levi does, um, which is why they don't they don't have to go do that to him because they're secure. So, yeah. uh, But that's also not a sure fire sign of insecurity either. Don't get me wrong. I guess I better shut oh, up while yeah. I'm ahead. So anyway. Um, Wow, Bill, thanks. Uh, we got to bring us another one up here. And, and this is a little girl. I knew a little bit a little bit prior, but um, she has a video, too, and we're going to open up with that. And Bill said he's going to stay up here with us. And that way, in case Sadie moves again, we get to see it. All right. But she'll most likely go to sleep now because she, she'll be out of the spotlight. Um, so so here's, uh, here's, here's Yang's little video. Then she'll be here when uh, this ends. <laughs>
Wow, that was a toe tapper, wasn't it? There is, there is Ying. There's that little girl right there. Well, hi, Celestia. Well, we can't hear you either. So um, we don't have any audio from you. That's why we try to come in early. We don't, we don't hear you at all. Um, and I don't know what to do about that one right now. So, but there's Ying. I guess I can go off uh, memory what I know about her. Celestia lives on a farm, but she has a working dog who that one is, that's her mentor, believe it or not. They're scary thought, but that dog comes inside too. So, um, now I don't know why I, nobody can hear you, Celestia, because you're, oh, no, you're not muted. Um, is your, is your iPad or your laptop muted, Celestia? I think your, your, um, your computer or laptop is accidentally on mute. Can I don't think she can hear us either. So interesting. Maybe you should text her. I'll, I'll move her off to the side and we're going to let Levi. No, we, maybe we'll talk about one of the other dogs. How's that? Um, actually, you have to talk about one of them, Sydney. So you can't do too much texting there. So we're going to take uh, her out of the spotlight for a second. Um, just take us all out of the spotlight for a second. How's that? But I think that might be right because she is on her iPad. She did tell me she got a new case for it. And it could have muted it while she slid it back into the case. Because I know she knows how to do this because we had a video call one time. Um, and it went very well. Boy, I love those iPad cameras, too. Um, so anyway, we have um, we, actually we're going to touch on something. Last week, we ended the show asking if you guys um, had any uh, the nutritional questions. All right. Um, actually, it looks like we have a question down here. Let me, do you see that question, Levi? You read it, see if it needs to come up while I keep going because I don't want to stutter here and nobody fill in for me. Um, you're muted, by the way, Levi. Um, <laughs> I see you're, well, you were, wow. Okay, say something, Sydney, make sure I can hear somebody. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. <laughs> I could. I, I I heard we heard Levi before. I don't know what the heck yeah. happened. That, that's really going to be uh, interesting if our guest host uh, loses his audio um, and he has talking points. Got to love live though, don't you? Right. <laughs> Say something, Levi. See if we got you back. No, nope, don't uh... get you back. So anyway, um, leave the studio and come back, um, and I'll go ahead and check this one out. Um, I think it's just a statement. I don't think it's a, a question. It's um, just a positive statement about the Great Pyrenees. <clears throat> Nancy adopted uh, Gus from a rescue, and he was about a year old. That was uh, in November. He continues to be, oh, really destructive in the house. Okay. Um, and uh, he's chewed uh, deck furniture um, and loves walked. yeah. Um, then he comes, well, of course, he just had a good deck furniture eating. So, yeah, he's going to go for a walk. All right. And, um, but, um, he does well in a crate. Wow. I guess I don't understand where this one's going. Just drives you crazy. You now, Steve? Oh yeah. Now we got you. Okay. Ooh, yeah. All right. So, yeah, so it's, uh, so like it's a uh, and part Sydney part. are working on her audio. All right. So if anybody has questions from last week on the nutrition, that's where we left off. Remember with, um, with Julie, and, they, uh, and she I can, said, I can also uh, address this one through uh, Nancy here if uh, okay. if and when uh, other questions come through. Um, so just looking for right. things that we're looking to chew um, and maybe why we're chewing too much slash being destructive. Uh, oftentimes this is attributed to boredom. Um, and it's also that just in general chewing uh, for dogs, not even just puppies, but dogs in general. Um, and your mileage may vary, but... Uh, chewing is a very good physical and emotional stress outlet for them. So re regardless of the age, regardless of the breed, some dogs just chew more than others. Um, and so if that either means we need more mental enrichment, um, be it puzzles, games, um, interaction, uh, or if we just need more or and or different um, items to stimulate chewing. So just depending on what you're doing, first and foremost, we always avoid rawhide. Rawhide has about 18.4% chance of digestibility. So 
it's more likely a blockage than anything else. Um, otherwise, you know, know that you're know what your dog's um, bite force is. Uh, so dogs that try to bite through a brick, um, let's not do anything too hard because then they'll likely shatter their teeth on it. Right. Um, different things like Himalayan cheese chews, moose antlers, elk antlers, uh, bully sticks, and it should always chewing should always be monitored. Right. But that's something that can always be separately addressed. Yeah. All right. Sounds like we have audio from Celestia now, do we? Hi, guys. Hey, boy. Hi. There we are. There's everybody now. Good, 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 good. Now, let's let's get her back up and let's start over again. Cindy, you start over again. <laughs> well, Ying is just a big and gorgeous girl. And a puppy. Yes, she's bored to death. She's been a good girl for half an hour. <laughs> We saw we saw you down backstage. Uh, her wanting to wrestle with you, or the other way around, which whatever came first. <sighs> now she's been kind of a handful for you a little bit at a year, uh, or less than a year old, right? She's about eight, ten months, something like that. Yeah, that's what we're thinking. Um, and yes, she is a very busy puppy. She may be big, but she's got puppy brain. Um, she's smart. She's friendly. She tries very hard to be a good girl. And right now she's trying to sit on the couch with half her butt hanging off. So, <laughs> <laughs> and she doesn't know why she's not stable. <laughs> and um, I love that picture of the Easter bunny rabbits on her because I like it when people dress their dogs up because everybody says, oh, how cute. I look at the dog. And that she dog's was, not amused. <laughs> she was doing better with that than the flower garland that the you know the girl was helping me wanted her to wear. She was not right. with that. Now she's only a year old, and uh, well, less than a year old. She's a big puppy, and always remember, a, a great Pyrenees. Their their bodies will grow about three times faster than their minds develop when they're young like that. They're they're slow bloomers in that respect. Their bodies keep going. And sometimes they don't get the memo when it's time to stop growing. That's why you got humongous Great Pyrenees. But um, she's a puppy, and we just uh, she, we just got to find the way she receives the signals. Okay, every dog is different, and that that could be where Celeste is uh, struggling a little bit. But thank goodness you have your big boy, huh? What's his name? His name is Rufus, and he's been begging to be let in. Uh, that's your option. Oh, you can let him in. Now, is the more, he the, more the merrier. Yeah. Uh, didn't he come from GPRS also? Um, no, I traded a dairy goat for him, but my other one <laughs> is also about to come in. As farmers, everybody, don't worry about it. That's that's normal. Okay. <laughs> now, um, but yeah, she uh, she has goats and stuff like that, and um, and this big boy is the guardian, not not the uh, not the girl. But I believe, if I remember right, you did. There's your other NGP or GPRS dog. I'm gonna get shot here, everybody. Yeah, Kiko's like over color. here. He's, I think he's off screen, and this is Rufus. Wow, beautiful. Wow. And big. Did I mention he's a big boy? He's walking <laughs> on the back of the couch. He learned that from the cat. <laughs> he's walking on the back of the couch. <laughs> He'll sit on it too. No, he's, he's too big to walk cat. on the back of the couch. <laughs> yeah. No, he saw the cat and the cat, and he really wanted in on it. So he taught himself that. All right, everybody, Rufus is not for adoption. Just you have to go <laughs> to it, findanotherdog.com if you want him. All right. Mm -hmm. But look at this. Oh my goodness. God, he's humongous. And you're being living the dream. You're in heaven being smothered by two peers. That's all I got to say. Where's my dogs? <laughs> yeah, wow. he's still pretty young too. He's not quite two years old yet, and he's just starting to mature a little bit. Now he's your goat dog, right? Your your yes, farm your working dog. He's the livestock dog. It looks to me like he makes a pretty decent couch potato, too. He does. He was wow. supposed to be outdoors, but uh, within, I don't know, a half a day of me bringing him home, the hubby picked him up and left on him and threw him in bed with us, and that was the end of him ever being a full-time goat dog. Okay, so he comes That's indoors at night. Happens. What happens if the coyotes get catch wind of that and they come at night? 
Um, he goes, we have a dog door. He goes in and out of the house and patrols, goes out about once an okay. hour. If he hears anything, he's straight outside. Um, and when he barks, there's a reason. So, you know, I know, I know how to listen to him. Right. He's there's got also his... a llama and a pretty sincere hot wire. Yeah. And that's a, and that's very, um, a very true statement she just made, especially with the working dogs. They do have their uh, communication abilities also. Right. Uh, slightly different than, than what we have in as companions. So, Pardon me. He, he's claiming me right now. All right. So <laughs> now, um, now correct me if I'm wrong. Do I remember that um, Ying gets along with cats too? We have uh, the barn cats and yeah. She still chases them a little bit, but they're so mellow. They'll just roll over on the ground and the dogs go up and lick them. <laughs> I've been very careful because dogs and cats, but the cat's happy with their relationship. Well, Great Pyrenees uh, typically does not have a prey drive. They no, wouldn't make good guardians if they did. Yeah, they're just all right. playing. That's all they want to do is play, play, play. Yeah. Um, so... All right. So right now she's having she's still having a little bit of trouble uh, getting used to the leash, right? Yeah, leashes are not her favorite thing. Um, she's very sensitive about anything on the front of her neck, on the back of her neck. You know, she's able to respond without getting upset. Okay. So now I do have a I have a question. Yeah. Could part of this the 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 the, the you have a couple challenges with her? Could those be related to all of the distractions you have at your place? Every time you turn around, there's something, a goat buying or a coyote howling or a dog barking or a cat meow. It's always a distraction and she's a puppy. Could that be part of the uh, issue? It might be. It's actually not. You just get to see the high points. It actually can be pretty calm around here. I hadn't seen that in any video I've seen. <laughs> oh, well. She's going to do this, and Celestia is going to do it because, well, she's a GPRS foster, and that's what they do, and that's what is. they do best. So, yeah, and I mean, we've got seven dogs here right now, so she's got plenty to learn from. She's already learned enough skills to live happily in this household. Um, she needs she needs someone who's going to help her move on to the next level yep. okay and, and i'm perfectly willing to keep her as long as necessary but this is an awesome dog someone is going to love her to pieces yeah yeah and 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 celestia and i we're gonna we're gonna talk about on why um ying is, tr is struggling in certain areas but not in others okay yeah and so. right this second she's just bored she's in a very good and, oh yeah they can easily get bored but you got a lot to do there so um and i and i don't let her in with the goats that's a whole nother mindset she doesn't need to worry about right that's right you're and, gonna come um, up my foster so, tail is over here being jealous right. now i know you got a lot of work to do um so we're gonna make this short and sweet great pyrenees rescue society.org that's where you want to go if you want to pick up where where <laughs> celeste and rufus leaves off she's gonna need a mentor dog Okay. She really does. Rufus is very good about teaching the puppies to behave, impressively so. Yeah. Well, uh, typically, as humans, we, we we shouldn't correct dogs because we always screw it up. Only a dog can correct another dog, and, and Celestia is living that. Okay. Oh, so, yeah. Um, All right. So, yeah, but we, we always miss the moment as humans because we're just not good at that. They are. Yeah. All right. Wow, Celestia, thanks for fostering her. Thanks for bringing her on. And sorry uh, we spent so much time with Sadie, but you understand. I get it. <laughs> oh, no, that's fine. And this girl is, she's going to be good as long as she can. Oh, and how big is she now? Um, She probably weighs 80 pounds or so. Holy cow. Yeah, and she's young. My husband carried her, you know, a two-armed puppy when he brought her home. Wow. So this is well, fast. she's growing so fast. And yeah, how long has she been at your house? Um, I'm thinking since December. I'd have to look to be sure. It's yes. Hi. Okay. 
But yeah, she's doing pretty good today. She's actually doing well. She just needs to go out and have some boomies with the other dogs. <laughs> and I think we'll let you do that now because you've been, uh, um, you were last. What can I, well, not last, there's still a few more dogs, but, uh, but we, we, we brought Sadie up first because I was selfish. That's a good girl now, Sadie, isn't she? Sadie is precious. Isn't she? But so, is your, so are yours, every one of them, in their own way. Because you got the perfect peer, just ask you. You're going to say, oh, my, all these dogs here are perfect. All right? They and are. So is a little possessive, but, you know, he's a foster fail. He knows he's special. Yep, that's right. So, all right. Now, can you stay up for the rest of the show? You got to go to work. And I, if you do, I'll, I'll take you down to the back to the back room. You can exit gracefully or you can stay up here. It doesn't matter. We got to move on. We got two more dogs. Well, let's get to the other dogs. I'm going to hang out and watch. Okay, cool. All right. Wow. That way um, we can see a little more of Ying. So um, we got us. Uh, we do got to move on here because Levi has something to say too. To, uh, and we don't, don't want to run completely out of time. I'm sorry. Sadie just took the cake here i mean she um i don't like putting a you know saying a dog's better than another because they're not there's no such thing but that one just does it for me okay and um, maybe you and should I, have, I have the controls <laughs> <laughs> so um we've got a dog that also um does it for me too and she's uh her her, her foster mom doesn't have the technology to come on the show and we just don't think it's fair to you all not to be able to see her. All right. So, uh, oh, she's going to get adopted, but we want to give everybody a chance. So uh, her name is Lumi, and here's her little video. That's another transformation story, isn't it, Sydney? Yes, absolutely. Um, uh, she has a banner too. I've got to bring. Uh, I'll bring them all up periodically here. I've got to bring uh, Yings up. But uh, you have notes on her. I have some. Um, yeah. Good. You want you want to talk about Lumi? Yes. So, <clears throat> pardon me, Lumi. Um, first of all, is <laughs> absolutely adored by her foster. Um, and she she currently has um, 
a foster brother who's a, a seven-year-old male peer. His name is Einstein. Um, she also has a feline sister that's a Siamese, and she does great with both. Um, so she's she's kind of um, she would be a great dog for a family that had multiple pets. Um, so she really <clears throat> let me. She's about seventy pounds now. Um, so she's a great size, um, and she just has such a sweet little face. I love it. <laughs> she looks older than a year, doesn't she? Yeah. She does have a mature look about her. Um, so it, it is a surprise to, to know that she's actually quite young. Um, but she loves affection. Um, she loves to stay near her person. Um, but yeah, she just, she's a, she's a good canine citizen in the house with, with both, you know, dogs and cats, which we often have that question. Um, people want to know how they do, um, with cats in particular. So. <clears throat> and also too, I'd like to add Sydney, if, uh, if I can, um, about the uh, wanting to be with her family. When she came in, apparently when uh, before rescue, they had her chained up outside oh. and uh, she was afraid of people. Okay. And she has gone transformed from being afraid of them to well, not wanting to them to leave. Okay. Without having separation anxiety to the best of our knowledge. So um, another transformation here. That's just amazing with GPRS fosters. Yeah. So, um, uh, and she's young. So, a year old. Now, isn't that something? Chain, chain. Why? Don't get. If you're going to get a puppy, and you plan on chaining them up outside, don't do that. Just don't get the puppy. All right. So, there's other things you can get instead. You can get a walk, you know, a stereo or a computer, but don't get a puppy if you're going to chain it up outside. And we do have, um, we have quite a few older puppies that are available for adoption. And I think that's a great um, segue so that Levi can talk a little bit about, um, you know, younger, adopting a younger puppy versus adopting an older puppy. And that's perfect because our next dog coming up is younger than Lumi. And the foster is older than almost God. <laughs> <laughs> and he runs ring rounds us young folks so and that's a good lead-in for for our next dog and then levi's going to be up to talk about is there a difference between a younger puppy and an older puppy make no right. mistake there's a difference oh, yeah. um, the difference is can you handle it or not all right me there's no difference because i can't handle any puppy all right personally <laughs> I'm too old. There's too much work there. All right. Oof, there are a lot of work. Anyway, our next dog has um, got an odd name. Her name is Elsa. And her foster dad is named George. So this is George and Elsa. But they have a little video. I, I actually like this video. It came out good. I like the tune, too. So it doesn't look like, sound like it would go good with a puppy. But you, know, you judge for yourself. Yeah.
Wow. Walsh is a good looking girl, isn't she? Absolutely. Um, there we go. So we want to see if there's any questions. And um, because if we got questions that come in about Alsa that we can't answer, George has agreed to come on the phone with us. So anyway, this girl is um, about four months old. I didn't know all that much about her because um, he was she was with another foster originally for a little while, and she something I think she was moving or something. Mm-hmm. And uh, Sydney probably knows more about Elsa than I do. Um, the um, Elsa was um, before she um, moved to Georgia's. She was with a family that had I think they had a seven year old daughter, um, and they just adored one another. Um, they would romp around the yard together, um, and it was just so cute. So, um, you know, Elsa is kind of a classic Pyrenees baby where she she's pretty chill for a puppy as far as energy goes. Um, but she's definitely, like, you can see her bone structure, those big old legs. And oh, fluff. yeah. She's going to oh, be a yeah. really big, beautiful girl. So, um, yeah. Right you- there. Yeah, <laughs> I mean it doesn't get any better than that. That's going to be a good size for a female bear. Yeah, yeah. So that's nice to know. People appreciate knowing that because um, that that a puppy has already been around younger kids, and because um, a lot of times people have the idea of you know we have kids of a certain age, we'd love to adopt a puppy, and we want them to be able to grow up together, which. Um, sometimes that's not very realistic. Um, but I think, you know, it's, it's really valuable for, for folks to know that also has uh, already been really lovely with, um, you know, a foster seven year old. Yeah. That Anatolian shepherd that she's with, um, now <laughs> both on leashes at lines, as you can see, uh, he, he has a fenced in yard, but you know, she's new to him and he wanted to be able to not have a problem. So yeah. But think about this for a second. That Anatolian Shepherd is also a puppy. And um, he's fostering that dog for the Anatolian Shepherd rescue. So this 82-year-old man has two puppy fosters. (laughs) And I whine with two dogs, okay? But uh, obviously I have more than that. But um, but, uh, way to go, George. Thank you for, for fostering like that. And it's not only fosters. He transports all around the country. I, I met him many years ago in Columbus, Ohio. He lives in Texas. So um, uh, I did, and I knew who he was back then. He's been doing it since 2005. This man has saved a lot of dogs. Yeah, he's a hero. He's a legend up here in our area. Um, I'm pretty sure Levi's actually heard of him. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, of course. And, and, and and I, yeah. Um, and I know that we're going over time a little bit, but I think it's worth it to hear um, Levi talk yeah. about younger puppies versus older puppies. And you're up, Levi. What is the, is there and what is the difference between a younger puppy and an older puppy to adopt? And why yeah. do we even need to care? Oh, absolutely. So certainly that I think uh, a fair amount of people will want like the baby baby puppies because they think, oh, I want this puppy for as long as possible. I want them when they're at their cutest. Um, but that's also when we typically see them at their most immature and or their, their naughtiest. Um, with your puppy puppies, uh, you've got a lot more management to do because that's a lot of the, their success comes from your management so that they can end it on a good note or that they don't accidentally succeed and leave a hole in your carpet that now the apartment's going to find um, because you went to the bathroom for like five minutes too long. So I have to catch that. Um, <laughs> I could not wait for my boy to not be a puppy puppy anymore, personally speaking, but they're super, super cute. Um, when you're getting a little bit of an older puppy, uh, especially probably out of your six, seven month range, um, you're getting one that can, typically speaking, uh, and look at the dog in front of you, not the dog you think you're getting, not the dog you think you want, and not the dog you had 20 years ago. But um, uh, typically when they're over that six, seventh month hump, um, they are a, they're often able to be alone a little longer. Uh, you don't have to wonder where they are uh, every five seconds that they're not in sight. Um, you don't have to listen to them chewing on your cupboards that I also have to patch now. And um, I have a hole in one of my sink cupboards. He has learned if he opens it up, uh, that I will come running. 
Um, and that's how he summons me now. So I was really excited for him not to be a baby puppy. But one of the biggest things, of course, everybody, well, not everybody, of course, a lot of people, again, are going to want that super ultra cute baby factor. But that's not all it's cracked up to be. Um, I would say, especially if you're getting a puppy puppy, you really want to have at least somebody come with them almost as much as possible for probably their first three, four months um, because of how much management and attendance they need. Um, certainly people have success stories of saying, oh, I left mine at home all by themselves for eight hours straight. Like, I'm glad for you, but I super don't recommend that. Um, especially to keep setting up success. Uh, and then once they get a little older and they can be alone a little longer, they don't need bathroom breaks every 15 minutes. Um, then a lot, that's where you'll see a lot easier uh, time of bonding or getting along with your dogs um, and a lot less frustration. Does that answer some questions or anything I missed there? Yeah, I think that's lovely. Thank you, Levi. And, and um, I, I, we do have several older puppies and um, that are available for adoption. And I, it's, it's so sad that people discount them because mm -hmm. they're looking for that visual baby yeah. factor. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I just encourage people think about their personality match. That's what mm -hmm. we're looking for. Um, right. And that's what you, the, you know, adopters should be looking for, but that's, as a rescue, that's what we're looking for. Um, and, you know, I have a foster that I've had since January um, and he's about 10 months now. And just to, address, you know, I can leave him home now because I've done the work. Um, I can leave him now with my dogs. I have to take the garbage and put it in the sink. I can't leave it in the cupboard because um, he'll get bored. But um, he truly, he doesn't chew on anything. I can mm -hmm. go run errands and be gone for a couple hours. And he's, you know, just about 10 months old and he's actually trustworthy. But um, there's so much monitoring as you were sharing mm -hmm. when they're really little when they're really young um and there's just so much monitoring and work that has to be because they're a baby yeah oh yeah <laughs> they're they're babies just like with human babies you don't leave them around electric sockets and cords and <laughs> other things that they could probably hurt themselves on puppies are notoriously curious which is fine um but curiosity and boredom often turn into destruction um and so while certainly someday in the future, you know, I will definitely have another puppy someday. Um, that is not something I'm like, oh my gosh, I can't wait for another puppy. Uh, at the time that I had my boy as a puppy puppy, I was at least in a situation that um, I didn't have to, or I'd rather I didn't have a job until he was about four months old, four or five months old. So I was fortunate in that regard that I did get to spend so much time working with him and helping him mostly succeed the the parts that he didn't succeed were entirely completely me our dogs do not choose the wrong behavior your puppies do not make destructive mm, habits on purpose because they want to be naughty they're just, um, they're i can elaborate a little bit because i don't want you to struggle here first of mm -hmm. all you just heard of a certified professional dog trainer a behavior consultant um talk about puppies and a somewhat of a way saying we're not going to have one because they're a lot of work. Okay. Mm -hmm. Just goes to show that behaviorists and trainers don't walk on water here. Yeah. Their dogs can have struggles. Part two, unwanted behavior is in the eyes of the beholder. Mm -hmm. If, if the behavior is okay with you, then don't do anything. It doesn't matter what anybody else says, mm -hmm. just like his dogs. Uh, he gets a little bit embarrassed periodically because something they're doing, he's okay with but he's afraid somebody else wouldn't be right? right okay so so what his dogs do make no mistake most of what he's good for except i don't think he wanted him to eat his cupboard door but uh, i get that part but um, the carpet's the problem. and then with puppies also too uh one of the older puppy when you get an older puppy one of the only disadvantages i can see is that sometimes not all the time the behavior you see is created from the human that had him mm -hmm. at a younger age. Okay? Yes, so that's a really good point to make is that uh, you can see learned behavior in some older puppies that somebody else already set them up to uh, 
to do there. Whereas oftentimes with a puppy puppy, you may have a better chance of uh, instilling those new habits or at least preventing uh, the older ones from coming back because in theory, there's a lack of older ones. Um, the benefit of the older puppy as well, though, is that they have a better attention span to then teach and help reinforce. Right. Yes. I mean, it's got its plus and minuses, and, and there's really no one over the other. Okay. Yeah, it's just whatever you're prepared to yeah. work with. Right. Yeah, and that, that's it. Both of them, you have to give knowledge. You have to give them knowledge, okay? Mm -hmm. And then, uh, so far as a young puppy and now an older puppy, and you've got the prior behaviors that was taught, that's not always true because... Mm -hmm. When you move it, when you move a guardian breed, it destabilizes them because they rely heavily on stability. Okay, and that's why they patrol the fence line eighty times a day. All right? <laughs> They're making sure everything's where they left it the last time they patrolled. Okay, you just wait one time, sit, let a squirrel pee there once, and he come around and check it. Oh boy, that's that. He ain't moving that spot until he deems it safe. Okay. So, um, but now when you move a dog into your new dog into your home, say a nine month old. Okay. And that dog's got all these behaviors. Well, he's all upside down. He doesn't know the rules and you start giving him knowledge and things start leveling out a little bit. Now the, uh, the learned behaviors from before will now have to be triggered, but they can still come back if we trigger a memory of it. Because a trigger doesn't have to be a bad thing. It could be a good memory, too. And they say, oh, hi, I remember. But you don't look like my old mom. But hey, okay, I'm going to be all over you anyway. That's what, that's what can also happen. So um, you always be aware that you don't, you don't want to be unreasonable of what you expect out of the dog. Um, yeah, and one last little thing um, that I will say about GPRS right now. I think um, all of the older puppies that we have have actually been in foster homes for many months. Mm -hmm. So they're not, so that's another benefit I think that I just wanted to highlight is that they've, I think, I do think that all of the ones that are older puppies that we have right now have been being acclimated to a home and being, you know, invested in by their fosters for several months. Right. Um, you know, we go through time periods, all dog rescues do, where it's like puppy season and we have tons and tons of mamas um, that are having puppies. And it's no fault of these older puppies that they haven't found a home yet. Sometimes it's just like there were more puppies than there were adopters and that during that time period. Um, and so the puppies have just continued to live with their fosters and get older. And so um, the benefit is my goodness, they've been taught all of these wonderful things and had that stability and consistency in a foster home so that they will have a, an easier transition to a forever home. Absolutely. And make no mistake, so the Great Pyrenees Rescue Society has got some of the finest fosters in the country. It uh, doesn't mean the other rescues don't. It just means I'm familiar with them now. I've been, I don't know, I've been working with GPRS uh, for about a, over a year now, haven't I? Um, and I, I work with five of them. And uh, GPRS is structured, very well structured, knowledgeable, very knowledgeable foster homes, very good foster homes. And so... When you get a, a dog from GPRS and there's uh, some behavior, don't wait till you're at your wit's end. I, I, I don't want to hear that because I'm going to say, what took you so long to call? If you're having some behavior that you don't know how to deal with it, don't be embarrassed. Reach out for help. They will help you. Okay. They have all kinds of resources. And um, because the dog's going to be upside down, he's going to not going to know where he is, who you are, and most importantly, where his previous family is. OK, so um, he's going to be a little confused. That's not a bad thing. Not at all, because they've raised the bar. They, they've made it easy for you. They've raised the bar on what he has to expect when he goes to the adopter. So the transition sometimes goes quicker in some areas, and but it's still up to the dog. What do you have to say about that one, Levi? Well, I think that's a really accurate point is uh like when they have been with their like their foster families a little longer, um, is that we also see uh, a more familiar 
um, set in that they've had. And so if they, they get their new transitional period with their, their new family, hopefully their forever family, is that they, they may go like, well, what, what happened? Uh, what, what went wrong? Where am I now? Um, why is this happening? Uh, and so if that means that whether this displacement is, um, I guess, depending on how it affects the new family, uh, definitely, you know, don't wait last second and just be like, well, this is a bad dog. Why did I get this dog? The sooner we can, you can reach out and we can help you redirect the behavior and turn it into something new right. or help you reconnect in a different way. We're not or we can look at system. it a different way too. Oh, yeah. Maybe, yeah, we can maybe look at it it's a not way. a bad dog. Maybe it's oh, not yeah. a bad dog. Oh, but the sooner that we can help you, uh, essentially keep the behavior from uh, getting stronger, getting worse, changing altogether in a not great way, uh, the sooner that we can help you guys with your connection and your bond. Yep. Bill uh, Claudia says it's a darn shame that Sadie's not more relaxed than what she is. <laughs> um, yeah, that hyperness has got to stop, you know. <laughs> yeah, she's bouncing off the walls. <laughs> wow! All right, everybody. Wow, we really ran on overtime, and uh, that means you got to add some zeros to those paychecks, right? To go with the rest <laughs> of the zeros. Um, yep. <laughs> Um, everybody here is volunteers. Uh, Great Pyrenees Rescue Society is a volunteer organization. Everybody does this on their own time for a different reason. All right. And uh, you got to appreciate that, too. So if, uh, if you send anybody as a volunteer a message and they don't respond right away, just be calm because you don't know what they've got going on. They do a lot of work. All right. So be calm be, like gentle. be understanding. <laughs> Or they might be ignoring you too. You never know. <laughs> if it's me, it's because it's getting to the season where my goats are having babies. Lots oh. of goats about to come. Wow. I got one on the ground and there, there will be more very soon. So I'm on the, I, in fact, I've been on the barn camera while we've been doing this show because right. I have a little girl that's ready to pop. Okay. I'm glad you didn't share that with us. <laughs> All right. Now, Patty has a question, probably for Sydney. Question is a six foot fence a must have. We have four foot uh, plus on two sides. Uh, no, that makes fine. it a four foot fence. So the fence is only as tall as your lowest point. And that's going to depend on the dog, isn't it, Sydney? It is. Um, you know, probably what we will do is say, is there a way that you can extend it a foot on those? those two panels I'm yeah that um because really um a, a five foot fence is going to be plenty for most a four foot fence sometimes we don't have any dogs who would be okay and safe in a four foot fence if you got um, not and that's, a four foot fence yeah. is just like no fence right mm -hmm. i mean yeah my foster puppy would hop over that in a hot second yeah, that's right you have um, not yeah, so so that's that's the thing is if you have a fence that's only four feet high, are, do you have the ability to extend the height? Um, because we're a rescue, we are very protective of our dogs. We always want them to be safe. So many of our dogs are strays and have gotten out of fencing that is not strong enough or too short. But yes, as Rena says, you know, we can test some dogs if we it's think still, there might be a personality match. We can it, test and see if if a dog is going to be okay in a four foot right. fence. But it's going to narrow your your search. I mean, it's going to it's yes. going to make it hard. It's going to be a, a not just every dog. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, so if you trust to work with us through the process, um, you know, it might take a little bit longer to find a dog. Um, but know that, gosh, this is a group of volunteers who are devoted and passionate um of, for finding these dogs a, a great home so we definitely are happy to put the time in to to check out all of these things right the, the, they'll they'll run the application through its course okay and um that uh that pyrenees at the daycare dad just told us she can clear an eight foot fence so now she cannot be alone outside anymore by herself and oh, uh, awesome. you had a fall. We had a dog on the show here one time that they had a five foot fence, and uh, and that was like no fence for that particular dog. Yep. Okay. So, uh, well, what do we do? Well, the dog had a foothold. You take away the opportunities and you make it a little more difficult. 
some peers, the harder it is, <laughs> the more they're going to get it done. Some peers, if it gets too hard, they're going to stop. Okay. But it, once again, it's all depends on the dog. Um, can they be taught not to go over a fence? We have um, been effective with quite a few of them. Yes. I'm not going to say 100%. But if there's a better reason to stay on this side of the fence, that we can say we can help with. But if there's a good reason to go on the other side of the fence, that's going to be get a little challenging. So you can make it more inviting to stay home. And that's a constant, uh, that's a constant effort the entire life of your relationship with your dog. You always want them to be here instead of there. So it's actually not hard. So thank you, Patty, for your question. So what is that we're looking at? So goat. Oh, oh goat. goat. I was going to yeah. say, that is a one ugly peer. No. <laughs> I was like, is that a, a Rottweiler? What is that? <laughs> He's an eight-day-old baby. He's oh. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm going to come to your house because I love goats. So, yeah. I want to come visit you. Now, how many goats do you have, Celestia? Do you, uh, there's things you don't ask a woman, okay? Okay, well, never mind. Um, <laughs> I won't ask. There is, I think I've Over two? Three. 38. 38. Okay. On the 38 here, and I've got more farmed out. Nice. I've got brush goats. I've, yeah, I've got some goats. Uh, now, to clarify, Celestia lives on a farm and she runs a goat farm and she has other animals also. I think you mentioned alpaca and one and alpaca, one, one alpaca. llama, three pets. But her, the, she's a foster home. Her yep. dog, uh, Ying, is not an LGD working dog, period. Nope. Matter of fact, none of yours are. You clarified that. Even Rufus. He comes in at night. He does. He's a farm dog. He comes yeah. and goes, but he's not mm -hmm. a livestock dog. Right. He's so uh, just remember that. So though, because uh, Great Pyrenees Rescue Society typically does not nope. send a dog out as a working dog because, first of all, they can't guarantee it. Now, then what? What happens if he fails? That's yep. why he probably came to the rescue anyway because he failed once before as a farm dog. Mm -hmm. So. And, and neither me nor Levi, we do anything with the working dogs. We don't, Correct. we are not credentialed for that in any way. There are places, Northwest Guardians up in Montana does that. Uh, yeah. um, there's places. Okay. So anyway, now we're 25 minutes over almost. Yeah. Let's wrap this up. And Sadie's been very patient with us. Ying hasn't. She's out of there. She left. Ying, Ying is taking a nap, all three of them. Oh, we put Ying to sleep, too? She's... If you want to put it that way, right? <laughs> I need to provide proof. Oh, my. She, she sleeps with her eyes open, doesn't she? Um, actually, she does sometimes. We can talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I got mine you know, telling me we're 20 minutes over. Yeah, everybody's heard the term. You sleep with one eye open. Well, the peers sleep with one ear up. Yep. <laughs> Guardian breed. All right, everybody. Let me get back to the section where we can stop being live. And uh, we actually have people viewing still, believe it or not. Yeah. Unbelievable. Good for them. Thank you, Thank everyone. Thank you for hanging in there with all of this craziness here. All right, everybody, say goodbye. Celestia, Bill, Bye. thank you thank for coming on. And um, oh, Sadie's awake. Is Sa yeah, Sadie's got her head up. She's up. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> she moved. Bye, everybody. Oh, she's Bye. Bye. Let's try this one.